Hello, happy fundraising Friday. Hello, hello, happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> um, if you're just joining us, please let us know where you're from in the chat box. We're here in Orlando, in case anyone yeah. was wondering. We are headquartered in Orlando, Florida. Also, can you hear Rachel this time? Can you hear me? <laughs> hello? Is the speaker close enough? Hi, Todd, hey, Jack. Hello, Emma, Paul. Thank you guys for spending your Friday with us. We have a lot of good content to cover today. I'm super excited. And if you see, um, I'm going to be responding to people in the Q&A and in the chat during this. So if you see me going back and forth, that's just, I'm trying to get to all of you guys and all of your questions. Yes, definitely please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to ask us questions. We're going to be answering them live on the webinar, and then some she'll just respond to immediately. She's not being rude, I promise. <laughs> Happy Friday, Christia. Is that how you say it? That's really close to my name. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. I love the old school emojis, too. With a colon. <laughs> Bring it on. Those were the original emojis. The OG emojis. Right? <laughs> I'm so excited you guys are joining with us today. We have so much to cover. We'll try to keep it short and sweet. That way you can get all your questions answered. Hello from Colorado. Hi, Emily. Dominique. TGIF. Alex. <laughs> Andrew. Josephine. It should be TGIFF. Thank goodness it's fundraising Friday. Thank goodness it's <laughs> fundraising Friday. Hi, Athena. Wendy. Oh, from Georgia. I'm going to be in Georgia next week. What's up? Oh, we have someone from Florida. Yes. Houston, Texas. Awesome. And Cali. Life. Robert, I hope you guys are doing out okay out there in Cali. Sorry, I'm just waiting for my tea to cool. <laughs> Okay, we're going to give it one more minute and then we'll jump right into the content. I see the Q&A. Hello from Lane. Oh, California. And then Courage to Speak Foundation. Hi, Jen. Oh, yeah. Tell us, um, tell us what organization, school, yeah. group, church you're with. I would love to see where you guys are coming from. Oh, the Children's turn. Shelter. Can you turn subtitles on? Let's see. You know what? Let's see. Let's see if we can do that, Justin. You know, we did not um, prep subtitles at all. I'll be honest with you guys. We did not prep them. But uh, we can probably at the end provide um, like a transcript. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's see here, for the subtitles, Justin, I'm going to put Christy's email in the chat, and then if you want to email her afterwards for the subtitles, we'll get that to you. Hello from Fort Lauderdale. Hi, city neighbor. Oh, Frontline Gardens for Veterans. United Way, hi. I love United Way. I love this. I love getting wow. to know all of you guys. Okay. So the attendance is going to keep growing. Make sure if you have any questions at any time throughout the webinar, you drop them in that Q&A box down below. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. And then Rachel and I are going to give you the lowdown on storytelling through digital marketing. The lowdown. Ready? Let's go. Okay. Everyone can hear us okay? Perfect. She, she'll, she'll keep track of the chat box. She knows, <laughs> she knows what's up. Okay. So today we're going to be covering what, Rachel? Storytelling through digital marketing. I, and we're going to be talking about a little bit about video marketing and a little bit about content creation, um, but mostly why having a story and how you can put a story together is very important for your fundraising group. 
do that thing. Yay. Okay. Yay. So I'm Rachel. I'm the marketing specialist here at Funds to Orcs. And this is Christy. Hi. <laughs> I thought I had time to take it. I thought I had time to take um, a turn. And she's the vice president of marketing here. And we are going to be your speakers today. We also have a guest speaker named Julie, and she'll be talking at the end of the webinar. Yay. Woo. Okay, perfect. That's us. Hello. We're so glad to e-connect <laughs> with you. Okay. So oh, we have someone that joined us. Is that Julie? I think that's Julie. I am in. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, Julie, uh, we're going to bring you in um, uh, once we finish the presentation. So if you want to go ahead and mute, mute yourself, and then um, when we're ready, we'll bring you on, okay? Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about the nonprofit sector, 1.5 million nonprofit organizations, 64.4 million adults that volunteered last year. And 427.71 billion private charitable contributions. Holy smokes, those numbers. A lot of money. That's, <laughs> there's money out there. Oh, I went too far. Sorry, guys. No, no sneak peek. <laughs> All right, guys. So now we're going to get into the juicy stuff. So this is the one of the main parts of the webinar. So it's how to tell your story through digital marketing. So these are the three C's that you're going to utilize to start telling your story on social media, um, email, any of those um, sort of marketing tactics that you're gonna be using while you're doing some fundraising. And so let's first go into character. So you're gonna focus not on just your group as a whole, but you're gonna focus on a single person or the entity as a whole, but in a very relatable and um, authentic way. So what I mean by that is, an individual usually drives more of a emotional connection than just your group in general. So you really want to focus on getting these stories of the people that you've affected with your organization out there as your character. And so your character really sets up the rest of your story. Um, you can always utilize, um, you remember in school, the climax map that everybody had to make? That can be utilized here too. So first you're going to build up with your character, get some brand awareness out there with your character, tell some stories, and then you're going to go into your conflict. So the conflict is the issue that you're trying to affect change with. So that's going to be the main thing that's keeping you guys from basically taking over the world with your nonprofit or with your fundraiser or even your company. And so this conflict is going to be basically the antagonist to your pro protagonist. So um, you've got an angel on one side, you've got a little devil, you've got polar opposites. So this is going to be what you're facing and what you're trying to um, basically do with this one is tell people what your conflict is and why it's such a pressing issue in the world. You have to make this conflict stand out, make it urgent, make it um, very intriguing to the eye and also it really helps to give statistics it really helps to make sure that you put out there the impact that you're going to be making um, or the impact that this conflict is having on the world and so our final one is change so how are you going to create an impact around this cause that you have um, this is the overlying goal of your organization so this could be we want to help this many people by 2021, or we want to raise this much in order to help MLS. Um, and so this is going to be where you can really utilize those st statistics that you guys have been recording um, to say, we've helped this many people, but we still need your help to reach our goal. Those are the three C's of storytelling. And you're going to utilize all of them together <laughs> okay so uh, those three C's utilize them to put your story together um, here we're talking about where do you use that story once you've had it built maybe your story is only one sentence long maybe it's two or three um, whatever that story may be once you have it together there are a lot of different ways to use it and to kind of rewrite it, repurpose it, and utilize it throughout your marketing. So one of the first places is your email marketing. So if you don't have an email database set up, 
That's definitely one of the things you need to do. You want to make sure that you are gaining contact information from your donors, from people that are interested in you, from your volunteers, because you know your volunteers are people that are already helping you with your mission. Um, so definitely collecting that kind of information is super important. And then utilizing your story in your email marketing. So um, maybe not every email you send out, you're making an ask. Sometimes you're just putting information out there. Um, maybe you put together a new uh, video and you wanna tell a story about that video or about who's in that video that you're making an impact on. Uh, but email marketing is definitely one of the places you should be utilizing your story. Talk about the character of the company in a newsletter. And the, the story doesn't have to be just one thing. It, it can morph and it can evolve and your mission, if it's one mission, but you have a lot of different like side missions, um, you know, your story can morph and change with that mission. The next place that's super important to use your story is in your social media and your content creation strategy. So um, a lot of uh, fundraising groups, what I see them doing is they'll talk about um, their story throughout several different types of posts. So if they're impacting one part of the community, maybe they pull out a story from one of those people and they talk about, you know, the mission that your group is doing and who this person is. So definitely use it on social media. You can uh, create a content calendar. Maybe you're sharing different parts of your story throughout a month long campaign. Um, and then Instagram stories, which is a function or a type of, what's the word I'm looking, a feature? Yeah. Feature, yeah, Instagram stories, you know, the things that disappear after 24 hours, like Snapchat. Um, Instagram stories is a great place for engagement, actually. And I highly recommend if you guys haven't tried making stories, they're very fun, they're very easy to do. And what's great about stories is there's donate buttons and there's challenge buttons. So if you create your own challenge, you can put a challenge sticker on that and get people, your volunteers, your supporters to share your stories and get others involved in your challenges or getting others to share your donate story. Um, and then right there, if you see in parentheses, it says five stories for optimized performance. What I mean by that is not five different written stories, it's five frames of the 24 hour story. So you make like five different posts um, within that, not five written out stories, just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Um, and then the next place to show your uh, story is on your website. Um, incorporate the three C's and uh, make sure it's very immediate on your website so people know as soon as they land on there what you do, how you make an impact, and you know what you're trying to change in the world. So many times people land on a website and they look at it if it's not easy to read, if they don't understand what's going on, even while you're shopping. If it's not easy to shop on, you just bounce right off. So it's super important for fundraising groups and nonprofits to make sure that your website, your mission, your story is right there on the front and you can immediately tell who you are and what you do. Otherwise people hop off and that's what we call a bounce rate. And a bounce rate is actually something that you can view in your Google Analytics, which on one of our next webinars, we're gonna be talking about how to read your Google Analytics. So stay tuned for that registration link, okay y'all? All right, now we have some examples and let's see here. So you will get, so I just had a question in the chat. You will get an email with the playback and slides after the webinar. And so um, don't worry about that. Listen, take some notes, but you will get all of this information afterwards as well. All right, so let's talk about some examples. So character, so this is focusing on one, one this is focusing on one individual um, her name is Bertha, and this is something that St. Jude is very known for, is focusing on these um, tug on the heartstring stories because their cause is so great. Um, but obviously, they have not, you know, been able to basically reach the, they, they want to be able to affect change, but this is the type of um, cause where it's going to be um, the change is always, the conflict is always going to be there um, until obviously cancer has been completely written out um, and they've eradicated, you know, eradicated. Yes. Um, this is going to be their conflict for a very long time. And so this focuses not only on the um, tug on the heartstrings, but it also focuses on a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. 
So Bertha has learned how to do her makeup and she's um, basically describing that it's not on the outside that matters, it's the beauty of one's inside that counts. And so quotes like that in social media posts are gold. They are very unique, very authentic, and it shows the character behind your organization. So I strongly recommend having quotes when you're doing stories like these about individuals. Um, and then also they have a link in bio to their entire story, which is on their website. Um, hint, hint, put stories of individuals on your website. Um, and then um, we're gonna look at Conflict Next, which is on the far right. Oh, but first, can you guys just appreciate the aesthetic of this page? <laughs> she used dark mode on the outside images and light mode in the middle, okay? And I do, please drop in the <laughs> chat, tell me, are you light mode or dark mode? Oh my gosh, when I finally went to dark mode, it was life-changing. Life -changing. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to derail, <laughs> I just wanted to appreciate the aesthetic. And I yeah. do want to know, do you, are you guys light mode or dark mode on yeah, your phones? That's very important. Tell me. We need to do a Twitter poll on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next we're going to move on to the World um, Wildlife Foundation. So if you guys haven't heard of them, I would be very surprised. They have been around for a very long time, a very, long, very time. long time. And so obviously they have an amazing post um, with these leopards in it, but they go into talking about what their conflict is. So there are a bu billions of people in this world but there are societies and economies that aren't contributing to sustainability. And so that affects these animals that they're talking about. And then at the very bottom, they say, that's why, key, be very direct in your messaging, that's why we need ambitious action. They're straight up asking for you, for your action, and this is what we need. So I highly recommend using messaging and wording like that because the more direct, the more simple you are, the more people are going to actually process what you're talking about and then actually donate or become a volunteer and it'll be way easier for you guys to get more people involved. And so next, oh, Rebecca said dark mode. Okay. Hey. <laughs> the, the next is going to be change. So this is the Gates Foundation. This is off of their Facebook. They have a huge amount of following on their Facebook. Um, their target audience is more I would say on Facebook. So we're gonna get into um, some tips and everything for, you know, where, uh, you know, for videos and stuff like that. But I would say a tip right now for your three C's is really focusing on where your, your target audience is and what your brand positioning is. Because every brand will have a predispositioned view from their target audience. Now what I mean by that is when someone looks at your brand, what you already have online or word of mouth, they already have an opinion about what your brand is or what your nonprofit is. And you kind of have to reflect and say, okay, is this a positive image? Do we want to keep on reflecting on that positive image? Or do we need to change? Do we need to change the messaging, change, you know, our story in order to get the right message out there? That's reaffirming your brand position. And so going back to this one, this is, um, so change, they, shared a article from the Gates Foundation uh, website that basically says Africa region is free of wild polio. And this is a huge milestone, not only for their foundation, but obviously for the entire world. That's amazing. And so this got a lot of engagement, a lot of likes, and it is positive change that you can share. So like I said, the statistics that you have of how many people that you have impacted um, is going to be a really strong way to get people to realize, oh my gosh, they are affecting the world. They are changing the world. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay, so those were really great examples. I am a visual learner, so these are some really good examples of people taking parts of their story and weaving it into their social media strategy. And you will get the deck if you register. It's coming your way. So Rebecca, um, to see the, all three panels of the same company, you can definitely change out, um, check out these um, different nonprofits on social media. Um, if you want more examples, we can definitely send some to you. If you're getting confused, just email Christy and we can get more examples to you. 
Holla. Okay. <laughs> so next is website storytelling. Uh, if you haven't heard of Alex's Lemonade Stand, great nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, when you first land on here, um, it's pretty immediately clear. Um, you can also see before the fold uh, who you're helping, how you're helping, and also a call to action. Read more. Up at the top, three main call to actions, get involved, ways to give, and donate. Not everyone is going to have, you know, the funding or maybe the notion to immediately donate. So giving them those alternative options to get involved is always super helpful. So um, direct and clear messaging, you know, who you're helping, what you're helping, how you're helping, and why um, there is a conflict. Um, but this is a really great example. Um, they're obviously celebrating 20 years, 20 years um, to cure childhood cancer. So super great job, Alex's lemonade stand. Very clear, direct messaging. Um, the other thing I'll say is um, maybe your fundraising group doesn't have a website. Maybe it's not needed. Um, this is a great example of the type of information you should put in your about page on Facebook or in your bio of your Instagram or your YouTube. Maybe YouTube is a big driver for you guys. This type of information, that story, whatever platform you're on, make sure your story is there. All right, now we have some questions to ask your board members to help with your content. This is my favorite. <laughs> I'm so excited. So we'll both be chiming in for this one. Um, so this is basically after you've figured out your three C's or even before you figure out your three C's, definitely get with your board members um, of your company to see where you stand with all of these questions. Because this is really going to help you narrow down your target audience, your messaging, and even the content, the pictures that you put online. So question one, what do we want to say to our target audience? This goes back to the brand positioning I was talking about earlier. What does your audience already think of you? What do you want to say to them? Do you want to completely do a 180 and change the messaging that you had before? Or do you want to keep on going with the positive messaging you have already in place? It's completely up to you, but it's something that you should all decide together. And then why is what we're saying important? Be authentic, be original, but also realize that every story needs a hook. Every story needs to have that intriguing mind that keeps you wanting more and keeps you coming back. So definitely talk with your board members about what we're saying. Is it really intriguing enough to get people involved? And how can we make it intriguing? What separates our nonprofit from others? So this is going back to being unique. Definitely do some competitor research. Do some research in your area, what other nonprofits are around and really see, okay, we're using the same colors. Why don't we change our brand colors? Or, okay, they're using the exact same messaging and you know words on social media posts. We should definitely change how we're doing things because you wanna make sure that you're getting the most you know, bang for your buck and then also the most people um, in your area to your social media, to your platforms. Correct. And the other thing is maybe they are doing one program and it's very similar to a program that you're doing or a fundraiser that you're doing. So maybe you need to change up your fundraiser. Maybe there's a nonprofit that's doing something similar as you every year. So maybe you want to do a totally crazy and creative new fundraiser, like a shoe drive fundraiser or something. I don't know. You maybe you want to change it up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, which lessons have we learned from inception? So experience gains knowledge. And so if, even if you guys are less than a year old, you still have lessons that you've learned along the way. And so utilize these lessons that you've learned um, into the story that you're telling. And so that goes into what does our content bring to the nonprofit communications world? Uh, and so this is great for blog posts, um, the experience and the knowledge that you have make it unique to your story, but then also share it because resources are a great, great way to get people to your website, get people to volunteer, and also to donate because they see that you are giving back to the community, not only to make change with the conflict that's happening, but also just in general, giving more knowledge back to the community. 
And then the last one, Christy, you want, you want to do the last one? What has been your biggest transformation or impact we have made recently? I started that off wrong. Sorry, guys. What, what, what's what been your, our biggest, you know what? We're going to, one more time, guys. Okay. <laughs> what has been our biggest transformation or impact we have made recently? Now, the reason why this question is super important to ask your volunteers, your supporters, your board members, why this is important is because what you think might have been your biggest impact might not be what someone else thinks. So it's always good to get other people's opinion on this. And also, if you have made a big impact, maybe you know you guys have received a major grant recently, or maybe you guys um, are feeding children uh, that you know don't have school lunches, and you guys have fed a thousand kids. Those kinds of numbers and information and statistics are great to use in your storytelling. You know, you put a face to a mission and then you tell a story about what you've done recently and maybe you guys will gain some new knowledge from you know other people on your team or from your volunteers uh, about some impact that you guys have had recently so i think that's that question is super important and i clearly am struggling today guys forgive me i'm really looking forward i see some great questions for the q a afterwards Yay. so some of the we're gonna get to them, but I wanna make sure that we address them afterwards. So just hold on tight. <laughs> We're coming, we're coming for you. Okay, so next three types of videos um, every nonprofit or fundraising group should have. Um, one is the pricier option. It's more heavily produced. Um, the benefit of having a heavily, nicely done produced video um, is that it's seamless and it's usually done in a very nice, concise way. Um, you can either write your script and uh, the video production company or whoever you hire can put together like a nicer, cleaner script. Uh, but the reason why these are good um, are for ads, for YouTube ads, for social media ads, um, to put on your website, um, to share in your email marketing. It's always nice to have something that is highly produced and very clean and cut. Um, and then just make sure the messaging is very clear and on point when you speak to the producers. The next type of video, number two, is an educational video. Um, the goal of an educational video is not always to get a donation. Um, sometimes it's just to educate people about the work you're doing or about what's happening in the world or about, you know, a group that is having a conflict, you know, whether it be animals or people or children, whatever that conflict is, sometimes people just need to be educated because they might not know what's going on in the world. So an educational video, the goal of it, simply to educate your audience and maybe even people that aren't in your audience they see it and they're like oh i had no idea that was going on let me click through and learn more that's the goal of an educational video and then next is a personal story again this is uh about the character the three c's character um so sharing um a face relating it to your brand uh it can be someone that you know volunteers with you and the impact your group has had um, it could be uh, a person that you've directly impacted that's not a volunteer, just someone you're helping in the community, um, or what else? A volunteer. I said a volunteer. A volunteer. Okay. You can um, also do like members in the community. If you help raise money for a playground, you could do a personal story about a kid that has never been to a playground before in his life, and now he finally gets to, you know play on a playground because of you guys. Or if you are an animal shelter and uh, you know your re most recent fundraiser helped ensure that every dog had a bed in your shelter, those are different types of stories that you can tell. Obviously, show me the dog pictures and videos. <laughs> Send them to me. You have my email now. Send them to me. Okay, next. Creative content tips. We love challenges. Woo -woo. Okay, give them examples. <laughs> um, let's see, we have the ice bucket challenge. That's the most popular. Most popular. I know y'all know what that is. They raised over, I think, two, don't quote me on this, I think it was $200 million. <laughs> On the ice bucket on challenge. The ice bucket challenge. The president even did the ice bucket challenge, y'all. <laughs> That's important. Uh, oh, you started from the bottom. Now we're here. You yeah, start, she did, you did, did start at the bottom. I did. Make your own challenge. Anyways, <laughs> uh, what I mentioned earlier on Instagram stories, 
uh, and I think Facebook stories has it now too. There is a sticker that you can add to your stories that says challenge. So if you create a challenge, you can actually get people to join that challenge and share it, not just in your stories, but also in hashtags. Yeah, we'll, we'll show you an example of um, the stories and stuff on the next slide. And then um, for build a community that you can convert. So you want, really want to be looking out for your target audience. So your messaging should really be targeted to the, the audience that you're looking for donations, for volunteering, um, for uh, getting involved in the community with your organization. Uh, you really want to build a community that you can obviously convert into sales, basically. Donors. Uh, donors, yes. yes. <laughs> and so um, on top of that, make sure you're engaging with your community. The more engagement you have, the more likely people are going to see your content on social media, um, thanks to those lovely new algorithms that have been in effect for a while. Um, and then educate first, sell second. Christy, you want to take it away? <laughs> yeah, I don't have much to say here other than um, it's always easier to uh, get a conversion, get a donor sell something like maybe you're doing a t-shirt fundraiser and you want to sell something if you educate them first on the impact that you're doing so um, if you're doing a t-shirt fundraiser and you want someone to buy a t-shirt um, it would probably be helpful to let them know what the not contribution what's the word the the extra revenue you know that you get when you're, <laughs> sorry guys i i can't think of the word but the <laughs> The extra revenue that is gained through this t-shirt fundraiser, uh, letting them know what it, that is going to be impacted will help someone. The proceeds? The proceeds. The proceeds. See, <laughs> I was, girl, I was thinking about that and I couldn't think of the word. You got it. The, the proceeds. Yeah. What does purchasing, what does donating, how do the proceeds help? So educate first, sell second. Um, the same thing with uh, the Fun Storks Shoe Drive fundraiser. Um, when you tell people, hey, help us out, clean out your closet, you're going to be helping our school send kids on a trip, or you're going to be helping our PTO put hand sanitizer stations in every classroom. Those kinds of things, when you're letting people know what impact it's going to make to convert, will help make the sale easier. Beautifully said. Yes. So credibility is key. Annual impact reports. So just talking about um, the produced videos as well. Um, credibility is key in the sense of the more produced videos that you have, the more um, impact reports that you put out, that's going to make you a reputable source. And so people might even start quoting you at some point because you have all this plethora of really rich content out there for people to use. And so the annual impact report not only is um, going to show what you guys are doing to affect your conflict, aha, three C's, um, three C's. Um, it's also going to show people that you mean business, that you're actually doing what you said you would do, which makes you credible. It makes it um, so you're actually keeping your word um, in the, in your, you know, business world that you're in. Okay, the next is um, how to take the perfect selfie video. And I'm, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can show you this. Are you guys ready? Okay, right, you can all see me. Okay, now let's say you're doing a Facebook Live, Instagram Live, um, and maybe you guys are packing lunches um, you know, to feed the homeless or to feed kids or what have you. Um, or maybe you're out in the community and you're, you're collecting shoes for your shoe drive fundraiser, Wh whatever it may be, and you want to do a Facebook Live or an event to do it, there is a right way to take a selfie video, and I'm going to show you right now, okay? I haven't done a Facebook Live in a while, but I can tell you how to take the perfect selfie video. Okay, so let's say, this is how people do it, right? So let's say you're talking to someone, you want to have them in frame with you while you're holding the, the phone, but... What's important is to create motion so that people stay intrigued because if you just stand there like this, this is a webinar, it's different, but on Facebook Live, if you're just standing there like this, they might get bored. So it's nice to create movement. So if you want to flip your screen and show things that are happening in front of you, the other thing is you can actually create movement by rotating it. You guys see this? 
right? And you're creating movement. So people stay intrigued and they're listening further to you and what you're talking about and what you're doing in the community. So create movement, whether it's flipping the screen or changing hands. <laughs> Y'all like that? The hand change. The hand change, right? Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again and we can get back to the content. All right, lap. All oh, right, we already talked about weird. challenges. <laughs> Just but, kidding. Um, really get your volunteers involved with your challenges too. That's gonna, what's really gonna catapult it into success is making sure that your base, the people that are really passionate about you do get involved with your content as well. Bloopers, we know all about bloopers. <laughs> yeah, if you guys like blooper, blooper, bloopers, <laughs> you guys like bloopers. I'm struggling today. I hope everyone is happy. It's a three day weekend. Happy Friday. <laughs> uh, fundraising Friday. Hashtag. Um, bloopers. If you guys have 15 minutes of your time that you just, you know, want to kill watching me try to make complete sentences, you should definitely head over to the fun stores, YouTube, because we have a 15 minute video of bloopers from 2019. And I promise you it's probably not worth it, but Hey, go check it out. All right, and then we have get volunteers involved with taking fun photos. And so not only are the bloopers going to be a great way to get your character out there, it's also um, your volunteers that take these fun, quirky photos. It really shows that you guys aren't just a brand. You guys are people. You guys are, you know, you have personality, which is what makes you unique. It really contributes to what makes you authentic and unique. It makes you different. And then the fun, relatable holidays. Um, oh, I love this one. This one's great. So if you're struggling to find, find content. content, basically, yeah. Um, you know, you're doing a lot with your three C's, but you're just, you know, the last week of the month, you just don't really know what to do. Um, you can always research fun, relatable, keyword relatable, holidays to your nonprofit or to your organization. Make sure that you can bring the holiday full circle and kind of connect it to what you're doing. It doesn't really make sense if you're fo focusing on milkshakes when you're a, an animal nonprofit. Um, and so video skits as well, these help with your character. And then um, we already talked a little bit about the Facebook and Instagram live story tags. Um, I think Christy can um, expand a little bit more on that with the example in the photo. So uh, this is what the screen looks like when you guys are creating an Instagram story. And um, obviously this is just a screenshot, but there's a lot of options here. And some of the things I really like about this, um, especially for nonprofits and fundraising groups, uh, one of them is a uh, poll or questions. You can actually poll your group. Um, maybe you poll them and you ask, um, you know, how would you like to be communicated with? via text or via email. You know, some donors today, uh, their inboxes are absolutely flooded, so they would prefer a text update. Um, you know, a volunteer sign up via text, something like that. You can actually pull people through your Instagram stories. Obviously, there's the hashtag challenge, so you can create a challenge, you can um, add this little sticker to it and get other people and volunteers and supporters to share your stories, use the challenge sticker and hashtag. Um, donation that's obviously a big one for anyone that's fundraising using that sticker super important and then register uh, that's something that you can utilize to register people for events uh, for webinars even something like this um, and then countdown countdown is a very fun one um, you can utilize that on a daily or weekly basis to count down towards an event uh, maybe you're hosting a gala or what have you and you want to count down I love that sticker super fun and then there's you know some other ones adding music uh, you can mention if you partner with a local brand or a restaurant or, you know, a community partner, you can actually mention them in your Instagram stories and then tagging your location as well. So there's a lot of options there. I will say that polling is fantastic for figuring out what your target audience is actually going to engage with. Um, and so you can do a poll of, you know, if you're a nonprofit that, I don't, I don't know, deals, you know, makes homemade ice cream. You know, we have a nonprofit down the street that has a ice cream for kids that are staying at the hospital. Um, what's your favorite ice cream? Chocolate. Okay, then we're gonna create content around chocolate ice cream. That gets more people to engage right away. So it's an awesome tool to figure out what your engagement is gonna look like for different things. 
perfect. Uh, also, if you guys didn't understand anything about the Instagram stories, definitely check out our other webinars, social media fundraising, social media ads, part one and part two. We cover a lot of things about how to fundraise on social media. And um, there is one question in the q and I'm not familiar with Facebook stories. Can you explain on those or a link to read about them? So definitely check out the webinars Christy just mentioned. But then also Facebook stories are kind of just like an Instagram. extension. Yeah, they're yeah. an extension. So you can connect your Facebook to your Instagram and then automatically post to Facebook stories as well. Makes it seamless and really easy for you. Okay. Our next two slides are very simple. We're going to be bringing Julie on, and uh, I'm gonna go through uh, our host uh, of the most, which is Funds to Orgs. <laughs> so I'm just gonna tell you what a shoe drive fundraiser is. For any of you that have never seen any of our webinars and you're brand new, um, I'm gonna tell you what a shoe drive fundraiser is. Um, it's another creative option that you can do. Um, we have a lot of ways to do it with contact or virtual fundraising and then we're going to do a quick Q&A, answer any questions that you guys have about storytelling, digital marketing, how to take the perfect selfie video, I don't know, video marketing, and shoe drive fundraising. So if you have questions on any of those five things, stay tuned. We're going to get through these next two slides and then we'll hop into the Q&A. So first, what is a shoe drive fundraiser? Uh, if you've never heard of a shoe drive fundraiser, think about it as a creative innovative alternative way to raise money without asking people to open their wallets. We're living in some unprecedented times right now and uh, people are holding on to their money a little bit tighter and so it's making it hard for nonprofits to raise money right now. So a shoe drive fundraiser is essentially an alternative way to raise funds without asking for donations and it's very simple. Um, instead of asking people to open your wallets, you just ask them to clean out their closets and Funds to Orgs, our, our sponsor, will be paying you for all the shoes collected. They pay by the pound, um, and you get a check within two days of receipt of processing of the shoes at our warehouse. Um, the, one of the best things that I love about this fundraiser is um, two parts. One, you get a fundraising coach, so we don't just hand the fundraiser over and say, good luck, let us know when you're done. Um, we have a fundraising coach that helps you every step of the way. Um, there are no out-of-pocket costs, the, the coaches included, you get them, no out-of-pocket costs. They, they'll talk to you whenever. You can call them at any time, Monday through Friday. Um, and then the other great thing about this fundraiser is it's super sustainable. So um, we have a lot of partners that fundraise with us all year long, um, or they combine a shoe drive fundraiser with other things that they're doing. Maybe they do a gala every year um, and they do a shoe drive fundraiser leading up to it and then a big event. Um, at the actual gala where they have like kind of like their final kickoff of the shoe drive fundraiser. Um, but it's a super sustainable fundraiser and it's a win-win because not only are you helping keep shoes out of landfills, you're actually helping micro enterprises in developing nations. And um, the way that kind of works, um, I'm sure there'll, there'll be questions about this. This is always something we get questions about. The shoes that you collect, Fun Storks pays you for the shoes, and then we actually ship the shoes overseas to developing countries um, to support families and micro enterprises. Because in places like Haiti, they don't have the infrastructure to have an Adidas store on their street. They rely on their local markets, kind of like flea and farmer's markets, um, to get clothing, to get shoes. And so, um, they actually buy used, used clothing and shoes in these markets, and uh, that's how they feed their families. So this fundraiser has multi-level good parts, good prongs all over this fundraiser. And there's no out-of-pocket costs, so who doesn't love that? Okay, next, Rachel, ready? Q&A time. Q&A time. Okay, so it's time to answer Q&As. Um, I'm just going to leave this slide up here. If you guys want to follow us, check out our videos. We post a lot of videos with fundraising tips on YouTube, on our social media. So definitely check that out in case you guys need any help. We also have a blog. Uh, if you go to fundstorgs.com, we have a blog with a ton of information to help nonprofits and fundraising groups. Uh, we also have guides with, you know, hundreds of fundraising ideas. Um, obviously our favorite issue drive fundraisers, but if you need other tips and ideas, go to fundstorgs.com, check it out. And then also uh, we have a number here to call. If you guys have more information, you can call right now. 
Um, I will not be answering because I'm hanging out with you, but we do have coaches that are answering calls right now. So if you do have questions about shoe drive fundraising, will this work for your group? How does it work? What do I need to do? Sign me up. Call 407-930-2979. All right. So it's time for questions, Rachel. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Let's start. Let's go. And there are some in the chat too. I think there was one um, asking about previous webinars. Um, our webinars, we have two up on our YouTube channel. So definitely check those out. Um, and then we'll be linking some of the other webinars on our website in the future. Um, and then if there is a specific webinar, like may maybe this is the first time and you want to see our social media ads webinar and it's not up on our YouTube, um, just go ahead and email me and I can send you links to those drop boxes. All right, let's answer questions about storytelling and digital marketing and shoe drive fundraisers mm -hmm. and all that fun stuff. Julie. Yes. While we're waiting for um, some more questions to come in, do you want to tell people about um, how much money you raise through your shoe drive fundraiser? Sure. Um, we actually found funds.org uh, through a Facebook ad. And so as I was searching for more creative ways to raise some more revenue for our organization, um, I reached out to them. It was incredibly simple. Um, we raised a total of, um, it was $1,082, but then we also uh, received a $270 bonus. So for our total of $1,352 for our shoe drive fundraiser. So we collected over 2,700 pounds of shoes. That is incredible. <laughs> and um, so what were you raising money for? Uh, my organization is called the Disability Sports Foundation. So what we do here in the Inland Empire of Southern California is to bring adaptive sports to our, um, the individuals in our area with disabilities, to bring them back into the game instead of sitting on the sidelines watching everyone else. So that's our goal. And that's what we work toward because it's something that lacks in our area. So I'm trying to fix that. You're making so an impact. This, I, I'm, I'm certainly trying. <laughs> so we had a very hard start because of COVID. We started our shoe drive fundraiser about two days before California locked down for COVID restrictions. <laughs> So we had a really hard time, but our fundraising coach and funds.org helped us keep us motivated, kept, gave us all of the resources that we needed to be successful. We love to hear that. Who was your coach? Um, Jim. Jim was our coach. Uh, the weekly phone calls were key because without his motivation and his advice and his tips and suggestions, we would have been sunk because we couldn't make people give up their shoes because they were too afraid for a stranger to come to their house. So we stressed contactless pickups. We partnered with a local pizza shop for all their takeout boxes and had a flyer on their boxes. We utilized social media in our website and our newsletters. And we did everything that we possibly could to push this along because it was a really difficult time in the beginning. Um, we lost steam and Jim was right there to keep us motivated and keep us plugging along. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> awesome, okay. So uh, let's get started on some questions. Um, I know you guys are all busy. It is fundraising Friday. It is a three day weekend. So we're gonna hop into questions. Um, and then Julie, if there's anything, um, any specific questions to you, we'll, we'll just have you answer them, okay? Okay. All right, so Rachel, what's first? Right, we have Kylie. How often should we send newsletters? We try to send out updates every two weeks, but should we be varying that with a specific ask to our subscribers? Great question. Um, okay, Kylie, so for your newsletters, um, some things I want you to think about. Um, have you A-B tested subject lines? How are your open rates? Um, open rates are typically, you wanna be in like the 15 to 25% range. Um, and uh, if you're getting low open rates, then you should definitely be A-B testing your subject lines. And then are you varying your content? 
So is one newsletter that you send in the beginning of the month different than what you're sending at the end? And is it always just news updates? Maybe you can be providing the three C's of storytelling. Um, maybe you share a video one week. Maybe you put together a video and one week you share that and then the next time you email out, you do a newsletter update. Um, think about the content that you're putting in there and the structure of that content because if you're, oh, it's raining. Hello, Florida. Um, Definitely think about the content structure because if you're constantly sending the same thing and maybe you're not getting as high of a click-through rate, uh, maybe you're getting less signups for your events or less contributions and you know donations, um, look at your subject line, look at your open rate, and then look at the content you're putting out there and see if the three C's of storytelling can help you vary that content that you're doing. Um, I think two times a month is fine. I don't, I don't think that's too much. If you're finding that you're getting way less interaction and you've already done A-B testing, you've already changed up your content, then maybe you should go down to once a month. Okay? All right. Thank you, Kylie. Um, can you show Rachel when she's speaking? Um, I think... Can you, guys, can you guys see Rachel right now? Because I can see Rachel. Yes, you can? Okay, perfect. Okay. I, I wonder if some people couldn't see you. Maybe that was during the presentation. Oh, okay. We usually have the presentation, the focal point. That way you guys can write notes and kind of get a good idea of what's on the presentation. So, I'm here. <laughs> She's here. She's available. Here. Okay. Uh, Kylie, again, um, how can we balance tug on the heartstring stories with making sure our affected girls and families do not feel exposed? avoiding poverty porn for lack of a better term. I've heard of that before. Um, so what I think is important here is uh, diversifying your portfolio of content. Do you agree, Rachel? Yeah, I think you don't have to have a picture of your um, volunteer or, or the person that you're affecting every single time. That's where the variation in content is gonna be so crucial. Um, that's where you can utilize stock photos. Um, you can utilize Canva, some of the different tools graphics. that we, graphics, um, some of the different tools that we talked about in our other webinars um, for content creation specifically, that's a great place to start. Um, that way you're not focusing every single post on the character. You can have one about the conflict, about the change without having to have um, people that are part of your organization in every single photo. Yeah, one of the things that, um when we talk about content creation and talk about strategy, it's, it's something that Rachel and I, you know, live and breathe every day. So um, the three C's are super important and you do want to talk about that in your messaging. Um, but if you need to talk about something else, um, it's important to have multiple categories. So it's important to have five to 10 categories of content for your email marketing, for your newsletters, for your social media posts, because if you're posting three to five times a week, for over a month, you're gonna need a lot of different content. Yeah. That way it doesn't seem repetitive. Because right. if you're asking for the same thing over and over again, your engagement is not gonna be there. Right, so what I say is, when I talk about categories of content, so maybe one of them is a story, a character story, uh, but maybe another one of them is um, a behind the scenes of your volunteers. So maybe your volunteers are packing lunches, they're, they're feeding animals, whatever they're doing, maybe you show off one of your volunteers or you show a team of volunteers. Um, maybe you show off um, what's going on in the community. There, there are different ways and different categories for creating content. And I think we touched on it a little bit in the social media fundraising webinar, um, which was earlier this month, but definitely have different types of categories. The three C's are super important and you definitely wanna weave those into all of your social media messaging but um, change up the type of content it is. It's not always gonna be a character story. Uh, maybe it's gonna be a statistics. Uh, maybe, um, I know you talked about you know, the women and uh, the, the females in your uh, question, but maybe you want to show statistics uh, and you, you create you know, a nice graphic and show statistics of women that are being affected. Um, in your community or in the world. Or um, even like the hobbies that your volunteers have. You know, something that brings that character into your messaging, but it's really focusing on how your organization is unique, not necessarily the character stories every time. Yes. 
Um, Carla, yes, you will get a recording of this. Matthew, would you say you need each of these three types of videos for each of your distinct programs? After school program, youth vocational training for young adults. Um, I would say eventually, yes. Um, it would be nice to have three different videos because then you have nine videos and you can use those nine videos throughout the year. Every couple weeks you can change up and you share a different video. Um, but I do think um, educational videos, you can have multiple types of educational videos. Um, for the highly produced, obviously that costs money because you, you need to pay someone to come in and film something, write a script, whatever that may be. Um, but maybe you only invest in one of those once and then you, you know you wait three to six months. And in that first video, maybe you talk about all the programs your organization does and offers and the impact it makes. And then later on, you know, when you increase funding, maybe then you spend some money on more produced videos for each of the separate programs. Um, I would say ideally, yes, you, sh you should have multiple types of videos of different missions throughout your organization. Emily, with the register button on Instagram stories, is that just a link? Could you use it to direct them to a Facebook event page? Um, you can use that link to direct them anywhere. Right. A shoe drive is great. Someday will you ever work with a group in the United States to do something like this? so that shoes can be donated to those poor in our own country? Great question. Um, so I will address this right now. Um, the reason why we ship the shoes overseas is because um, people in America already have shoe organizations. They have shoe nonprofits. They have um, profits that support the homeless um, in local communities. The reason why we ship the shoes overseas um, because places, I know I mentioned Haiti earlier, but places in Haiti, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but fewer than 15% of the population has cars. Um, so shoes are their main mode of transportation. Sneakers are their main mode of transportation. That's how they get to and from work every day. That's how kids get to school every day. Um, Haiti is just one of the 26 countries we work with. Um, but what we do, um, what FunSorgs does in the US is we support nonprofits and fundraising groups in the US through our shoe drive fundraiser and we pay you for the shoes you collect in your communities. Um, and it's kind of one of those things that's great is because you guys are getting to affect your community immediately here locally in the US and the shoes go on to help communities all over the world. So it's kind of a win-win. What's next? Okay, I've been answering some stuff. Brenda. Any shoes, <laughs> any shoes. We take um, gently worn used and new shoes, any season, any style, any size. Usually just no holes, no, yeah. Gently worn used and new. Mm -hmm. What is the timeline for a shoe drive fundraiser from beginning to end? That depends on where you live, but <laughs> typically 60 day campaigns. 60 days. Rebecca, go for it word because we have a program. Okay, so Rebecca has a free store, kind of like Goodwill for families to come and shop for clothing for free. Oh, that's kind of like that nonprofit I work with. So her the Pace question Girls Club. is, we already ask our audience to donate clothing shoes. Would we receive backlash for selling something they donated? Well, you're not actually selling it. Um, you guys are, um, I, well, I guess you are technically selling it because we're buying it from you. Um, but the way to navigate it uh, is that they're actually making a contribution um, towards a cash payout. So you guys are gonna get money. Um, you know, you could raise $1,000 through a shoe drive fundraiser. You could raise three, $5,000 through a shoe drive fundraiser because the more shoes you collect, the more money you earn. So I, I think there is a way to very nicely answer that question and, you know, finesse that because the shoe drive fundraiser, um, yes, there are shoes, you know, for the community, but um, you guys are actually getting a check in hand to really make an impact in someone's life. Can I add something to that? Yeah, definitely. Of course. 
<laughs> the way that we handled that in particular, that issue specifically, was that all of our um, announcements and our uh, verbiage that we used on all of our flyers, our website, and our social media said what it was doing for us, how we were going to use that money, and that that it was a win-win for everyone, that the shoes were being sent off to an impoverished area to help their communities, as well as how we specifically used it. So we were very, very clear and very, very open from the beginning that they knew what the shoes, that we would not keep them, that we would turn those shoes over and use the cash for another purpose. So then it was very clear, very open. So anyone that donated shoes knew that we weren't going to keep them, that they were moving on for a higher purpose. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. Um, okay, next question from, is it Karen? Karen? Hong? Karen Hong? Um, she wanted to know advertising specific events for organizations, such as a series of webinars about drug education and prevention. Uh, their target audience is both parents and high school students. So what I would recommend is first watch our social media ads webinars part one and two. If you don't have that, um, email me. Uh, my email is in the chat. Uh, I will get you links to those. Definitely watch those webinars because we talk about all of the basics, strategies, A-B testing, all that fun stuff for advertising. But if you guys are doing um, a web, like webinars, um, we've been doing webinars for a few months now. Um, it just came very organically for us. We were focusing on YouTube videos, uh, but I like the, the aspect and platform of a webinar better because I like being able to interact with you guys and answer your questions live. Um, but for webinars, if you guys want to put out a series of it, I highly recommend putting some advertising dollars towards getting people to sign up for your webinar and targeting specifically people in the school areas, in um, age ranges, students, and all of that targeting you can actually do in Facebook Ads Manager. You can target people that are parents. You can target people um, that are um, related to schools, PTAs, PTOs, um, Scholastic, um, the national PTA. You can actually target audiences in Facebook Ads Manager. And then the other thing I would do is obviously definitely email your database um, and put out some content on your social media talking about your webinar and give them a week, two weeks to get familiar that a webinar is coming up to sign up, put your link in bio so everyone can easily register for your event. I hope I said your name right. Okay. Um, Christia, which is Athena, I believe, it said, what is the difference between a Facebook page and a group? Do I need both or is one good enough? Okay, so Athena, I'm not sure what your organization is, but a Facebook page, um, I think every fundraising group and nonprofit should have a Facebook page. Um, and there is a nonprofit template to make it easy for people to donate to your group or your um, organization. Uh, I think everyone needs it. A Facebook group is different because a Facebook group um, is a place that is typically a private group um, where people can interact um, on certain topics and organiz like organization information. Um, I love Facebook groups. I'm in, I'm in a, a lot of Facebook groups. But um, the thing about it is you can't put ads in Facebook groups. You can obviously put up posts and whatnot um, you know, to interact with people that are in that group. But uh, a Facebook page, you can actually run ads. Uh, you can update people. You can upload videos. Um, you can add a donate button to a Facebook page. I think that uh, everyone should have a Facebook page um, before a group. And if it comes time that you have people that are interacting and engaging with your stuff a lot and you want to create a group to talk about certain topics, to share ideas, um, to interact with. I know one of the groups I'm in is all about PTA and PTO in schools. And so I love being able to interact with people in that group. Um, and usually they're sharing ideas about fundraisers. They're sharing um, ideas about, you know, how to keep kids entertained at home. They're sharing um, funny parent memes, things like that. If you feel like your engagement on your Facebook page warrants a group, then definitely create one, but always have a Facebook page first. You want to answer one, Rachel? Sure. Um, so 
what are some more nonprofits that are great at content that we can follow to be inspired? Also, how much does a highly produced video usually cost? So I'll answer the first part. Christy can answer the second. Um, but usually, um, I know Christy really likes Charity Water. So Charity Water is a great one. Um, I really like um, St. Jude, but then also um, I've just revisited the um, the World of Wildlife Founda Foundation. That's one I really like because I like animals a lot. Um, but I would say those are my big top two um, just because they're really known brands and they're really successful at getting donors. Um, for smaller nonprofits, I don't really know. Um, Christy, do you have some smaller ones? Um, yes, yeah, so I uh, really enjoy uh, the Pace Center for Girls. Um, I also uh, volunteer and support the Special Olympics. Um, so their main pages have a lot of engagement, a lot of great ideas, the Special Olympics, but they also have local chapters too um, that you can check out. And then um, beyond the Special Olympics, there's also... Um, Give Kids the World is good. Give Kids the World. Um, there is a UN, um, I think it's called the Girl Up campaign. Uh, they make a lot of great content on Instagram, Girl Up. It's either Girl Up or Girl Up campaign, and it's actually uh, a UN initiative. Um, so they do a lot of great content. And again, um, some of these we've already talked about in our social media fundraising and our ads webinars. And uh, I would definitely check out those because we, we show some more content ideas from other nonprofit and fundraising groups. Um, what is the typical duration of a video to introduce our services? So um, I think uh, anything that's uh, highly produced should be 20 to 30 seconds up to a minute. I think educational videos, um, if you're just doing like a quick snippet and educating people about information or statistics, you could do a minute up to 20 minutes, depending on what you're trying to educate them about. Maybe you're giving them a training, maybe you're informing them of something and then, and then you're also giving them a training, but that one is also good. Um, but yeah. Tutorial on how to donate something short and simple. Yes. Uh, and then the last one, shoes, are the shoes clean before they're passed out? Uh, the micro entrepreneurs actually uh, clean and um, distribute the shoes in the developing countries. And how do you donate for shoes? Um, I don't know what you mean there, Andrew, but uh, if you have any questions about the Shoe Drive fundraiser, definitely go to FunStores. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> um, is there, um, will you type out my um, email yeah. one more time? For one last time in the chat, I will be typing out Christy's email. And do you guys have um, any other questions? Last call. Oh, oh, I love the light and dark <laughs> mode. I'm so glad you guys did that. Light mode, dark mode. You guys are the best. All right, All right there's email. Everyone loves charity water. Why not? <laughs> they got us up. Um, and uh, we type our website as well. Uh, last few questions. Um, I know we got to hop off guys here in the next two minutes, so I'll be really quick. Okay. What funding is available for NFPs that provide transitional housing? Um, we actually are going to be doing a webinar on grants um, and um, our founder, Wayne Elsie, will be joining us on that one. Um, but I would definitely check out um, grants. Uh, one of the, one of our partners um, that we've collaborated with before uh, is myrenosi.com. They have a lot of information about grants. I would definitely check them out. Uh, what is appropriate for organizations to utilize Slack, generally speaking? Are, are you talking about Slack, the messaging platform, Athena? I think so. And Andrew, uh, she posted the uh, website fundstorgs.com as well as my email in there. Um, Oh, tech groups often use Slack to communicate about different topics. Yes. So um, we actually utilize Slack here at Funstorgs. Um, I really like it. It's, it's great. great. <laughs> there are public Slack channels that you can join. Uh, if you download Slack, you can join public Slack channels to get um, communications going. 
Um, but we typically just utilize it for our in-house communications. Yeah, from a marketing standpoint, I would really focus on engaging in Facebook groups and with your content and, and stuff like that instead of uh, Slack. Um, and I think that's everything. Uh, Dennis, did you have one more thing? Last call. Um, and for highly produced videos, guys, um, that's going to depend honestly on how long of a video you want, like how much information you want in that video, um, as well as, um, who's filming it. Can we list the webinar calendar? Yes. Yes. I, you know what? We will next week, you know what we're going to do, Dennis? We will put, we'll put our webinar calendar up on social media. There you go. And in the chat box, oh, oh. Can you put myrenosi.com in the, yeah. Perfect. Okay, guys. You all are amazing. Thank you for joining us on your fundraising Friday. I hope you guys have a wonderful three day weekend. Happy Labor Day. Everyone, please be safe. Uh, and thank you for spending your Friday with us. This will be mailed out. You guys are awesome. Cheers. Bye, guys. We'll see you guys next Bye week. <laughs> we have another webinar next week, guys. School fundraising ideas. For You're PTOs, a part of a school. PTAs. It'll be great stuff. Hop on. <laughs> Give away. We forgot. <laughs> we forgot, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we love you all. Have a great weekend.